welcome to Titans TV. Today's show, we're going to be discussing high value women. Can women be high value? You know what? I've heard it a lot being said with inside of the manosphere community that, you know, women can't be high value or they need a man to be high value and so forth. So I actually want to hear your thoughts on this. What are the component parts of a high value woman and is there such a thing as a high value woman even so we're going to go into this today of course i'm going to send you guys the link so you guys can come on in and have a conversation with us and you already know yeah this is a learning experience over here on titans tv we have a profound saying if you are truthful then produce thy evidence so of course everything that we say today should always be backed up by some type of paperwork some type of how can i put it peer review paperwork some type of observational facts some type of sound reasoning needs to go into this we can't be just talking from the just just talking for talking sake you already know on times tv we, we produce the receipts baby so we're going to go in today okay of course of course yeah we've already got my good brother Banksy up in the building with me let me actually see if i can i can share my screen well well with you guys so you can see my brother is there. Where are we? There you go, Banksy. Hey, how's it going? How's it going, Callum? Big up everyone in the chat. Good, good. Big up everyone watching the stream. Make sure you hit that like. Yeah, <laughs> baby. Let me just make sure that the audio is fine as well. Family Tree, let me know what the audio is saying on your side. If we're good to go. And of course, we're going to have a real good show, okay? um audio input capture let's have a look yeah i can i can hear it i can hear the stream perfect 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 so family tree i'm actually going to just go into the comment sections real quickly before we actually get into some good you know meaty information yeah all right cool shouts out to um on code was good family long time no see uh bad march is up in here and of course you know, my good Banksy, my brother Banksy's always up in here in the comment section with us. So Banksy, 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 do you know what? Yeah. Hmm. I was Say I've been watching yeah, you on just pearly things. <laughs> it was yes. listen, yeah. Ha. Huh. When I get time to actually go on YouTube, yeah. I don't really get much time, but when I get my time to go on YouTube, I look for Things that's actually going to educate me, enlighten me, going to give me some type of like different way of viewing things. I was loving like the conversation, the flow. You guys were talking about um, Passport Bros, one of your friends in Australia. You know what he was saying about having, you know, if he's looking for a wife, he's going overseas. And I was like, right, this is interesting. This is actually interesting. Like this whole, ha. Ah, this whole red pill and manosphere community uh, is, is very, very interesting. Talk to me, Banksy. Yeah, I mean, that particular show was uh, about men looking elsewhere. And I've been thinking about this for a while now. And, and I myself am I'm already preparing the pathways towards going elsewhere. And I'm not even elsewhere. I mean, I'm going back home, effectively. I'm, they say birds of the feather flock together. I'm going back to the Iranian Jeez. women. <laughs> Because there's one thing to be said, as much as, uh, you know, there's a whole range of, and, and Iranian women differ amongst themselves just as much as uh, English women and Western women. But there's one thing, there is still a large pool of traditional Iranian women available because of the religious aspect of the country, because of the way it is. And don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm, I'm not a massive fan of Islam, as everyone knows, but I have now begun to see the value of at least keeping a woman in a traditional role because there's a double standard in the west they want traditional men they want a man that buys pays for everything buys the house buys the car does the you know goes out makes the makes the coin uh, but they don't want to be traditional women this is what pearl's gripe is the whole time uh, it's like you want a man to be traditional in the, in the in the sense of paying for everything and providing support security all that are you a virgin are you gonna cook and clean for him? Are you gonna are you gonna be massaging his shoulders when he comes home from a twelve hour day work? But no, no, they're all boss boss bees nowadays. They all want to be a boss bee. So uh, and and I hope you know I don't want to swear on this show, so that's why I'm trying to curtail some of my <laughs> some of my language. But generally, yeah, they're a boss bee as well as 
uh, they want the man to provide it for everything. Well, then what are you? Are you a boss? If you're a boss, then you put your hand in your pocket. How is it that, you know, there's a, there's a saying in the, in the men's sort of dating circles, the women are always bosses and, and independent until the check arrives. Then suddenly they get T-Rex arms. You know, the T-Rex arm, it just can't reach to the pockets, to the, to the purse to get the, get the money. <laughs> It's just that the hands are too small. The hands are just can't reach. <laughs> it's not their fault. We can't blame them if their hands can't reach to the to the purse to get the money to get the card. <laughs> hey, I love it. I absolutely love it. Family tree. Again, if you guys would like to join in with this conversation, okay, the link has been shared down below. Please come on in, have your say, and let's have a good discussion, okay? And I need somebody to come in here with, I don't know, something, something real controversial, some real controversial speeches. <laughs> All right. So, Banksy, we've been discussing um, high-value women or high-value, a high-value woman. I want to know, because mm. I've heard it, that there's no such thing as a high-value woman. What are your thoughts on that? There are high value women. It's just women don't recognize and certainly with feminism, it has lied to them to think that their values are what a man's what women think that what they value in a man in a high value man is what men value in women. They don't realize it's a complete reversal. What men, women value in men with, uh, you know, some maturity, experience, money, finance, you know, security. These are not the things men give a give a hoot about. <laughs> I've got to think about words that are not swear words. Uh, they, they don't give a give a hoot about things like that. Men, a, a millionaire will marry a girl at a, at, a, at a Sainsbury's checkout, but a a, a millionaire s a, a woman that's a millionaire goes for a billionaire. They don't go for the guy who's serving them McDonald's. That's the difference between men and women. A man can absolutely marry they marry across and down all the time very rarely actually a man marries across and up but women just through their hypergamy alone almost 99 percent of the time only marry across and up the same level as them or above them they never go down in social standards because just like chris rock says a woman can never go backwards in luxuries and 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 things because a woman you know when, once a woman gets a boyfriend that has a car she ain't dating a guy who has a bu who goes on the bus she ain't catching the bus no more she's now only dating men with cars <laughs> when when a woman dates a man who has his own place she ain't dating a guy who lives with her parents <laughs> with his parents and men don't go backwards can't seem to go backwards sexually although i don't totally agree with that i think men can compromise on on sexual de uh, you know depravities if if a girl is 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 just you know doing all sorts of the nasties uh, but they marry a woman nasties in the way that, that one of their you know girlfriends did one of the thought girlfriends did then they're willing to take it in fact there's a scene in uh, in a film with robert de niro called analyze that and He's got he's gone to a therapist and he says, you know, I do these things and this and this with my wife. But then I've got my mistress and, and I, you know, my girlfriend and I'm doing these and, these and and the guy and the therapist goes, well, why can't you do the same things you do with your mistress, with your wife? He goes, are you crazy? That's the mouth she kisses my kids with. <laughs> <laughs> so men do have their their sexual sort of. Um, uh, standards as well and but they can compromise that for a good mother and a, and, a, and a wife women never compromise their luxuries and and the standards for a guy who could potentially be a good guy or potentially be loyal uh they will always say you know they will always switch the guy's loyalty a guy's uh love for a, a dude with a Porsche or a Lamborghini or or a uh, um, what's it called a, um, a limo. So unfortunately, that that is how it is. This is why women initiate in Britain, and I and I got figures for you as well. Sixty three percent of divorces are initiated by women. Um, in America, some people say there's studies that say seventy percent, and in fact ninety percent if they're uh, university graduates. 
admittedly, I haven't found those. I found the UK statistics because, you know, the UK statistics are, are from the government, so I'm, I consider them fairly reliable. But generally, yeah, divorce rates, they estimate divorce rates are actually above 70%. But the only reason that they're around 60% is because most people are not getting married the way they used to anymore. So that demographic of people who would normally get divorced, uh, married and divorced, they're just coupling and then separating. So that never gets registered as divorce. So that's why the, the statistics on divorce isn't particularly accurate because a lot of people are not even getting married. As a man, I play the odds. I play the statistics. What are the statistical chances of me Marrying someone in this climate, in this country, in the West, or a woman from the West, with the mentality of feminism, and what are the chances of me either getting divorce rape or just just getting destroyed in, in family court uh, and not being able to see my kids and all of that? Those are the percentages. And I'd look at the statistics. If, they, if you jumped out of a plane and they told you that this parachute only opens 60%, you know, it won't open 60% of the time... <laughs> Nobody's jumping. <laughs> Hi. So, yeah, but as far as the values, sorry, let me get back to the value thing. Women's values are in their youth and in their, in their chastity. And they lose that very quickly within the first, I would say, five to ten years of their adulthood, when they reach sort of that adult age. And unfortunately, they don't recognize that that is when they're at their most valuable. And I hear this all the time. There are shows upon shows, Valuetainment, uh, Pearl's show, Sarah's show, hundreds of other shows where women go, well, what I want to do is I want to get my business together because I'm an entrepreneur, model, Instagram influencer. And once I get my finances right, then I'll find myself a, a high value man because I'll, I'll, I'll also be of a high value woman. They don't realize all those years that they're spending on their so-called business, being a power bee. That's when their values are going. Men don't care. Men don't care about how much money you make because we have to pay for things anyway. You got them T-Rex arms when the bill comes anyway. So uh, why do I care if you earn £100,000 or earn £10,000 or £2? I have to pay the bill anyway. <laughs> You ain't paying for me. <laughs> and if you pay for me, you resent me and then divorce my ass because I'm a weak beta male that you're always paying for. There is no win in this situation. If you pay for me, you're going to resent me and leave me. And if I pay for you, then your income means dick to me. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. What are you bringing? To you? What, what I want is a, a healthy young woman that's a little bit submissive and just gives me a peace of mind, doesn't chew my ear out the second I walk through the door. You know how many men I've listened to, they talk about, dude, I go, I'm crushing it at work. I'm crushing it in my career. I'm bringing in the money. I've got the house. I've got this. I've got that. And when I come home, I have to hear a, a mass. It's like a megaphone in my ear. I'm like... Just give me half an hour just to get home and just exhale <laughs> before you begin. <laughs> That's all I want. It's like about 30 minutes. But no, 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 no. Why didn't you do this? Oh, you forgot. The, 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 the. Did you know what she did the other day? <laughs> I don't care. I just been crushing it at work all day. Hey, I'm loving this, you know. <laughs> and listen, family tree, family tree, what are you guys saying? Talk to me, yeah? I need you guys up in here with me as well. Of course, the link has been shared. It's down below. So please, um, join in if you can. And of course, hit up the like button if you're enjoying the show so far. You know, we've turned over a new leaf. These shows will not go past the hour mark. I'm aiming for like 45 minutes for most of these shows <laughs> to just get in and get out and have this discussion, bring people in, get different uh, viewpoints going in. You know what? I actually wanted to bring something up. Actually, let me see. Where is it? I've got it written down here. Because, how can I put it? Um, a lot of the time, let me actually bring it to me. Let me go to my... Jeez, listen. Let me see. How am I looking? There we go. Nope. I'm not even in focus. There we go. Let's get it. Let's get it, baby. Am I in focus? Yeah, I'm in focus a little bit. Coming a bit closer. Make sure you guys get to see me. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So, yeah. 
you know, because a lot of these times we have these conversations about, um, you know, high value this, high value man, high value woman, and so forth. And there's various different definitions, you know, going around everywhere. Um, you know, we have Kevin Samuels with his definition. We've got, you know, the different places within the manosphere. I know I've listened to Fresh and Fit and other places. They have their definition as well. Um, I'm sure Rollo Tomasi has his own definition of things as well. But I, I always go back to like, I always like going back to the academics. Like, what do the academics actually state? You know, and of course, like one of my titans themselves you know, has to be um, David Buss. He is like, the, the he is the real godfather of all of this, in my humble opinion, okay? Um, and let me actually see. I think I've got a definition down here. It says here that mate value, and I'm giving you a definition of mate value, actually. Mate value is an individual's overall level of consensually assessed desirability on the mating market and encompasses the degree to which a mate could promote uh, the reproductive success of whomever mates with them. That's also from Simon's 1995 and David Buss 2003, okay? So, when we're talking about a person's mate's value, it's their overall level um, of desirability um, on the mating market. So, what does the opposite sex find desirable about them? What does the opposite sex on a consensual basis um, fits their preferences? What are the qualities that the opposite sex look for? It's not what me as a man look for in me as a man or me look at in a man or another man for whatever his qualities. That doesn't make up my, my value as a man. It is what does the opposite sex, i.e. what do women want what are their preferences? What are the qualities? What are the traits? What are the characteristics in a man? Um, yeah, in a man that they are looking for, okay? And so it's the same thing for a woman. What are the characteristics? What are the traits? What are the preferences that men have about women that is most desirable to men? And the things that are most desirable to men would equate to high value the things that a man puts places value upon in terms of a woman makes a woman high value so i want to know what are the characteristics what are the traits what are the preferences as men do we have on women or about women and what are those preferences do they need to what are those qualities that they need to have a lot of to make them a high value woman banksy that's to you Number one, uh, in this day and age, especially in this day in the West, if you uh, keep your chastity, ladies, if you're an 18, 19 year old girl, or if you're actually even younger, because nowadays they're losing a lot younger than even 17, 18. But if you're still a virgin, stay a virgin until you're married. That is your biggest commodity as a woman. That straight up, without any other um, question or doubt, I will tell you. Not, not even, not even like be a virgin. Although that will make you higher value, but the next level, let's say one partner, maybe two partners at best. Um, if you have children, I'll be honest, there's a lot that's gonna, you know, it's, that's that's you're not you're not looking at. I mean, it all depends on your own personal scale as well. I mean, there are there are plenty of beta males out there and and, and plenty of guys who haven't you know done anything with their lives and are and are just floating through life and. You know they're happy to take on a guy, a, a woman with with children or whatever, and 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 they'll just they'll do it. But in my experience, most of the men that I've seen that have taken on a woman with more than one kid, uh, or or just a, a single mother of any sort, they end up being playing second fiddle in that relationship. They'll never be dominant because the woman will always dominate the man in order to make sure that her children are not being abused in any way by that man so she's always got that fear of oh this is the stepdad that's going to abuse my child you and so as a man you can't 
be your ma your your true self because you're constantly you can't be a father because she won't allow you to be a real father to to discipline your children to guide your ch children in the way you should because they're not your children so she's always going to interfere in that so you can't raise you're paying for those children but you can't raise those children in the way you think is fit um it's it's best so you're not a real you're not you can't you, you can't um uh, what do you call fulfill your role as a father you're always playing second fiddle to her uh, children so you are not even fulfilling your role as even a, a, a husband or a partner uh, because you're always having to submit effectively to her will and and the will of those those children you are always going to play catch up in that relationship and you will never be able to actually assert yourself as a, as an as a man as a, I'm not even saying dominant in the sense of when I say uh, a leader of that family you know the, the that's what women gen ironically that's what women feminists they've, they've they've surveyed feminists and they want alpha males they want right wing males they don't want the beta male feminists don't want weak men so if you're going to be a strong willful individual who is competent and can can actually lead a family and say right guys we're going to do this we're going to do that this is how we're going to push our family forward and 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 I'll take the lead in that. You're rarely going to be able to do that because she will always, especially women. I found especially women who've been single mothers for a while, they have to become so macho. They have to become so masculine because they have to run everything. They have to, you know, handle everything. Very rarely they'll let go of that. Um, what do you call it? that? That mindset, and they'll become submissive to their man. It's, an, you know, you again, you're playing the odds. You're playing the odds. What are your chances of finding a single submissive woman or a single mother that is going to submit to you the way a single submissive woman would? Very low. Very low indeed. In some cultures and some countries, you may still get away with that. But in the West, nine out of ten times you're dealing with a highly masculine woman who's having to juggle ten things because she has to because she's a single mom. And so her energy is always going to be that macho sort of uh, masculine energy, which is going to constantly compete with you. Uh, and you want to, you know, you in your case of being a macho. I dated a, a girl from Zimbabwe once, a nurse. Now, she was a single mom. But I, I this is why I say I, I only date women if I date. Uh, Afro, Afro Caribbean women. I only date women that are from the continent of Africa, not ones that were raised here. Uh, I don't like. Uh, I'm, I'm going to just say black women with 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 the uh, that were raised in Britain or in America. Their attitude is just not conducive to my the way I want a girlfriend. But this lady, single mother, but she completely allowed me to be the man in the family, and 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 be the man in that relationship. She absolutely allowed me to take the lead in things. She would look to me for even though sometimes she I actually would like her advice because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I was actually younger than her. But she would allow me to be the man for as much as possible until I asked her for for, for advice or I came to her for, uh, you know, okay, guidance. Where do we go? What do we do here? Shall, shall we go there? Shall we do this? But unless I did that, she would absolutely allow me to be, even though she was more successful than me, slightly older than me, and actually had a better life experience than me in a lot of areas. And But I was smart enough to recognize I was never I've never been a macho um, sort of so chauvinistic type of person I was smart enough to recognize when she was smarter and she was she knew better in this situation so I would yield to her but she would always allow me to do that not just jump in and take over that was the only relationship I've had where a woman uh, was a single mom but still knew that she should allow her man to be the man and, and not de emasculate him I've never seen it since. I've never seen it in, in girlfriends that I've had, other women that I've seen, my friends, female friends that are single moms. The guys nuts from day one. Like, unbelievable. Some of them are egregiously, others more subtly. But because I think they're afraid that they're, they don't want a stepdad to tell their children what to do or be this cruel stepdad and leave a uh, psychological scarring on their children. And so, yeah, they come with those scissors in hand from day one quite often. <laughs>
<laughs> it's like this relationship. You see this? If you want this vagina, you're gonna have to put your balls on this table. I'm gonna have to <laughs> put it in this guillotine <laughs> because that's the that's the price of this relationship. Um, I don't know, man. Some people do it, others don't. I had a great stepdad, I'm, and this is the thing. I'm I'm not even saying this from an experience of of just outsiders. My own mom is an insanely masculine in the, uh, f female. She is, uh, you know, she very rarely, she hates taking orders from men. <laughs> um, and so my stepdad, although the great guy, awesome guy, I mean, I appreciate how he looked after us and raised us so much more in my later years in life. But when I look back, she emasculated the crap out of him. She just cut his nuts off <laughs> i'm like you know i love you mom but i would never marry anyone like you <laughs> because you you just you just cut him down at, at the knees she just did not allow him at all to to play the the male role in the in the relationship and surprise surprise the relationship eventually ended no matter how many years it went because it doesn't no no man can be emasculated forever the, the most beta wimpless rim, you know soft limp wristed beta uh, you know boy that you can possibly find eventually you know finds his nuts and he mans up and says enough is enough i can't do this anymore i have to be a man there's this thing inside us this warrior this this hunter that we have to you know take the leading role in in our lives and we can't have women just you know, constantly have us under the thumb. Every man, and I know that their wife had them under the thumb, eventually left. Almost without exception. 100% agree with that. And I'll believe that too. All right. So let me get into this now. Woo! Let's see. Because I'm seeing that this thing doesn't look like it's in focus much. Let me just make sure it is. Nope. Wrong way. There we go. We back, baby. Titans, Titans TV, baby. Young, 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 young Kelly, baby. Let me just make sure that it gets back to normal. Come on, hurry up. There we go. Lord have mercy, Yahshua HaMashiach. So yeah, baby. All right, let's go. Family, listen, do me a favor. Tell a friend to tell a friend that we're live right now on Titans TV. We're going in. My brother Banksy up in the building as well. We're talking about high value women. We're talking about uh, relationships. We're talking about can a man actually be in a relationship with a woman who doesn't even allow him to take control of a relationship as well. That's kind of in, intertwined with it. But right now, I want to get into the whole mate value. I want to get into high value. What do men, what does we as men actually value in a woman? Um, and I want to be more precise because I've made mention of this, right? Men, we have two different types of sexual strategies or two different types of mating strategies. We have a short term and a long term, okay? And those two, sometimes they don't align. So what we value for a long-term mate may not be the same thing that we value for a short-term casual partner, all right? Two different things. At times, we even have like a midterm. See, this is something else that I don't I actually haven't really seen um, being mentioned within academic studies too much because we even have short-term, long-term, and even like a little midterm. Like, I know as a man, sometimes we may have, like, girlfriends that we have for maybe six months to a year rather than just for there for casual sex. Can you imagine? So, I want to discuss now, like, what do we find valuable in a long-term mating partner? Like, what do we considerable, consider to be marriageable partners, right? And Banksy touched on this earlier on as well. And, you know, the two things that men value okay, that everything else predicates from is their fertility or reproductive value, okay? When I say their fertility or reproductive value, reproductive value in the sense that how many, how many, let me, let me make that make sense. Let me see. How many years do I have with you in order or how many years are you going to be fertile for, for me to have children with you, right? We look for reproductive value in a woman, and that tends to be younger women, right? 
we wouldn't go with a 40 year old or a 45 let's go for a 45 year old woman we wouldn't qualify that as being a high value woman because we want women for their reproductive value that is what makes you as a woman valuable i know society will teach you something completely different but your reproductive value is the most valuable natural resource on earth only through a woman can other men or girls or girls and boys or children actually be born you are the vessel for these children to be born the most important natural resource so we look at that we look at fertility we look to say hmm, what are the signs to show me that you are potentially a fertile choice that i can actually have children with right those are that's that's the one set of component of of your whole value itself the second component actually is more to do with your virginity and chastity or sexual fidelity right because it solves the problem of you know man's greatest fear which is being cuckolded right no man wants to spend their resources or share their resources with a child that's not theirs who they believe is theirs all right so we want to have or we want to make sure that we are the first one to go up in that we want to make sure we are the first you know sexual experience you have with a man because we don't want other men to be with you we're very territorial we don't like the fact that other men are talking to you we don't like the fact um you know that you may have had other sexual partners so if you really want to be a high value woman and for most women now especially like for the millennial because this is my age group the millennial women more time jesus christ like it's it's, it's ha i'm going to say this very lovingly but it's kind of over for you guys like most women our age group now has actually hit the wall in the sense that your fertile or your reproductive high reproductive valuable days are actually gone already we prefer younger women we prefer women that look fertile that look healthy that are uh, chaste that we know we can how can i put it as a man we are status striving creatures women are hypergamous creatures right so you women look for men who have high status and you marry a cro- well you marry laterally and upwards as brother banksy already stated right whereas we as men we actually hmm in terms of socioeconomic status we are hypogamous or homogamous hypogamous in the sense that we marry down in search of, in terms of social status but we also marry homogamous homogamously homogamously which means we marry on the same level also all right but we want a woman that actually can stand by our side and there isn't no gossip to it because our women are like ornaments they are a reflection of us and our status in life so we can't possibly stand a woman who has gossip slander or a past that isn't you know comely because that means that we have you know faulty false illogical thought patterns to think that we can actually be with such a woman it actually makes us look bad all right well banksy let me bring you back in and um you know let me know your thoughts on that yeah, I hundred percent agree. I mean, uh, there's a reason why, even to this day, with all the boss ladies and all the feminists, you ask one question from from any woman, any woman, anywhere. And in fact, I'm going to start doing a series of street interviews to try to uh, establish this. Ask them, what is your body count? And I guarantee you, they either don't answer it or they'll lie, because. Even with the biggest of the baddest of the boss ba- ladies and the and the feminists, they still don't want they still don't want that that rumor that reputation that uh, gossip like you said. There's a woman right now. Her name is Eliza Eliza Blue. She's uh, she's trying to make a name for herself on the internet. There's a lot of chit chat about her on on like Tim Pool and all that. But anyway, she is going around striking anyone who uploads video there's a vi- she did a video for hip hop stars or something like that hip hop something where she, it's it's quite a risque video that you know she's wearing lingerie she's wearing very short so fitting tight fitting clothes and it's a, it's a music video and she looks very nice don't get me wrong but she is now going around striking and having people on twitter removed from twitter because she has connection with Elon Musk 
because people are uploading that video because she's trying to wipe because she used to be an OnlyFans girl. She used to be an escort. There's a lot of shady things in her history. Now she's trying to sell it, sell herself as this butter wouldn't melt in her mouth, goody two shoes lady who was who was trafficked. She's sell, saying that she was a human trafficking survivor and what's coming out is actually all people did was take her pictures on on the internet and catfish men with her pictures she considers that being humanly trafficked i mean i'm not going to get into it that's a whole whole other can of worms but what i want to illustrate is that this woman is trying incredibly hard to whitewash her past because she doesn't want to be seen as a harlot as you know the the garden tool the or, or in on the internet nowadays they say three or four um so yeah, she's. I mean, I, and you would think if you're a feminist, if you're this proud feminist, and you you don't give a damn, and and you don't want to slut shame and this and that, you'd be proud of that, your past, right? You you're just an OnlyFans girl, you were an escort, but you know we don't want to slut shame you. You know, you, I'm sorry, you're a sex worker. You you're doing a legitimate work. And don't get me wrong, I don't really want to slut shame women who do sex work. God bless them. There's a lot of men out there who would be doing a lot of horrific things to women out in the streets if it wasn't for some of these sex workers mm. taking out the, the energy Mate. of a lot of young men who, who can't get laid. So what, sometimes a, there's a service. As a man, I don't think as a man, we should ever slut shame women. It's not in our best interest to ever slut shame a woman. I think... But, but it's not even us. It's, it's women. women. It's women. It's a, it's a, it's they a, do it 10 times more than a man would ever slut shame yes. a woman. Yeah. It's a competition tactic. It's actually a competition tactic mm. to uh, derogate other women to make yourself look better. Yeah. yeah. But so as men, we, so we, we, we like uh, promiscuous women because, you know, our default uh, sexual strategy technically is short term. So we want as many uh, short term relationships as possible. So bring on the promiscuous women. It, it, it's, it's a bit of a bit of a double edged sword. Bit of of a uh, paradox for men because we do like to obviously have sex with as many women as possible but yet at the same time we want the bearer of our children to be permiss uh, to be uh, chast because we want to assure paternity because historically and all the other testings paternity was only assured in one way and that's exclusive uh, sexual access uh, and so that is something that's also instinctual within us we want as I said we have paradoxical desires we want to sleep with a lot of women, but we want all those women to just be with us and no one else. <laughs> it's like, how the hell is that going to work out for you? Unless you're some sheikh in some Listen, Arab nation with a harem. <laughs> you got to build your harem. you got to build a harem, baby. Or the samurais of, of, of Japan with their geishas. Mm -hmm. Unless you've got some kind of, you know, incredibly high status where you can totally have a whole host of women exclusively to yourself in reality uh, if you're if you're sleeping around if you're as a man you know sleeping with a lot of women well those women what what do you think they are they're, they're sleeping around with a lot of other men as well that's what's gonna happen uh but for me my number one goal if there's a mission in my life before i die is to destroy the concept and the very source of simping if I can destroy simping, I would consider a life worth lived because simp men who simp, especially for ethos over the Internet, men who are buying bathwaters of women, those men need a big slap across the face and their asses kicked to the gym. <laughs> what are you doing buying bathwater of a woman? <laughs> what is wrong with you? The day I can put those type of e-thoughts e out of business, I consider that a, a life worth lived. You know, that, that's a mission of mine to kill simping because I'm not going to, I'm, 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 I have nothing to say about women. If you can sell your bathwater to a bunch of men, then good on you. You, you go, you do you girl. I want to stop those who purchase the bathwater. I am. Ch I want to change the minds and the mindset of the man who's buying the bathwater, not the one who's selling it. I don't care. As many women, they, they, you can go. Oh, by the way, there's another woman who's selling her flatulence in a oh, jar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, that has to stop. That has to stop. That has to stop. But not because I want to stop the woman. I want to stop the man who's willing to buy a jar of flatulence of a woman. Is, is this simping or is this simply a fetish? No, I mean, 
in in if it was a fetish, I would say maybe that's a that's a minor sort of a, a small amount of men, group of men who might have the fetish, but she's literally making millions of dollars out of this. So we're not talking about a small portion of men. This to me is is in the realm of simping. If you're buying flatulence from a woman, you're simping. Yeah. I mean, I know men. I used to I used to work in the industry. We used to buy bags of thongs. And then sell them to to men who requested the girls in our magazines to send them their thongs. We used to just buy a bag of like a go to I don't know Primark, buy a whole bunch of thongs and and on the women's underwear, spray a little bit of cheap perfume on them, put them in a in a sealed bag, and sell sell it. I was I worked in a company that did that for women for guys. <laughs> Bra, 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 men will buy anything, and and this was in the days of magazines. They used to see them, buy the magazine. They used to like the magazine. There was some minor uh, sort of uh, interactions between the, the 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 supposed girl in the magazine and and the guy, like letters. We're talking literally emails and letters back then. And then they used to request, "Could you send me like your underwear?" It's like, "Yeah, sure, for X amount." And then we would just send it. The girl that we that was on the magazine has no idea. We just these are models that we just hire and shoot photos and videos with. The rest of the work is done with the editors and the guys in the in the team. The, the guy the guy who's writing these letters, he's talking to a bloke. <laughs> he's not even talking to a, to the to a woman. This is where Andrew Tate, by the way, that's that's kind of crosses over in Andrew Tate territory. Uh, he did that. He scammed men for years like this. And unfortunately, I have to say, I was part of that that uh, that industry to some extent because I did contribute, at least in my way, to that overall industry. Which, unfortunately, yeah, there are men out there who will buy m women's underwear and they think it's soiled underwear, or or they'll buy flatulence in a jar. That has to end. That has to end. That that this <laughs> that is, is a that is mad. unacceptable. <laughs> this is actually mad. Listen, Banksy, you know. Listen, I I need to we need to have more conversations like this because you guys are opening me up to a world because I'm starting to listen to these type of conversations right these whole uh, red pill discussions <laughs> and what what is the um, the statistic about uh, roughly a third of adult adults men haven't had sex in the last year yes. Yeah, or um, have only had sex, uh, was it? Uh, no, haven't had sex in the last year, and uh, uh, the, or they're virgins. Mm. That, that's a, that's another one. There's a, the, the rate of virginity is actually through the roof uh, nowadays, uh, especially because a lot of young men are so deathly scared of Me Too's and all of that stuff. Uh, they, they're barely even going near women anymore. You, you 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 can be charged for some crime if you just say hi to a woman in, in the wrong way or if she well, I mean if she takes it in the wrong way which you can never predict because you have no idea see this is <laughs> this when I'm starting to hear these stories yeah I'm like oh, you are chatting rubbish like, like this can't be true but the more, <laughs> more that I've actually you've been married a long time dude with certain guys within the whole manosphere I'm like oh Okay, maybe, maybe maybe it could be true. Maybe it could be true, because I don't know. When we were young, I don't know. I don't know what was going on. But when we were young, this, this, was, this was unheard of. This was absolutely unheard of. Now, the thing is, Callum, you, you come from a... Uh, these are perspectives in life. You, you come from a man who's 6'3". What are you, 6'3", 6'4"? 6'3", yeah. You live a different world to me. Mm. I'm 5'8". You and I may be on the same planet, but we're in different worlds. <laughs> we don't approach life in the same way. It's, it's an entirely... When it comes to the dating scene, you and I are, are, are so far apart from how we, how we can actually attract women. It's unbelievable. And it's only recently <laughs> I've started to come to this awareness. Because I have friends who are like considerably short to me. And I remember them saying, oh, no, no, she's too tall for me. She's too tall for me. Or, no, she, she won't be into me. I never, I never really clocked too, too tough in my head. But the more that I'm being, uh, how can I put it? I don't want to say I'm being red-pilled, but the more I'm hearing these Manosphere red pill conversation, it's like, oh, okay, this is actually a thing. This oh, is yeah. actually a thing.
Wow. It's a very much a thing. But from your perspective, you're literally in a in a tower above us, <laughs> yeah, and and you can't see you can't see the minions below, <laughs> wow. scrambling for 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 uh, for scraps. <laughs> This is interesting. Like this is so interesting, yeah. And I want to have more of these conversations. Family tree, if you are loving this conversation and you want to hear more conversations like this, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Let everybody know that we're back on Titans TV. We're gonna have these Titans Man shows, okay? We're gonna be doing it. Loads of these shows are gonna be popping off where we're gonna have these types of discussions. And of course, we're gonna have um, you know, talk with the Titans. We'll be coming back. We're gonna have our Titans come on in, have lectures, have interviews and presentations and so forth. And then, you know, we're gonna have the other Titans TV shows where we discuss religion and philosophy and, and history and all of the good stuff as well. But these particular shows, you know, it's gonna be a Titans Man show. We're going to be going straight into like more Manosphere information. We're going to be going in. My personal goal is to actually touch upon man's biological imperative, right? That is number one. Secondly, our existen existential purpose. So I want to have more discussions on that in terms of like, what do we see our purpose here on, on this world being? And of course, for me, I already think that our existential purpose is something that we create for ourselves, right so what is your purpose in terms of you know career wise what you want to do in terms of business wise what you want to do um instead of in terms of the mark that you want to live leave on this earth as banksy says he wants to eradicate simpism so you know i want to have those types of discussions on this particular platform that we are calling titans man okay all right baby and of course yeah, like if you're not following me on the socials, like what are you doing? Yeah, come on in, follow me on the socials. I'm gonna start having the lower thirds popping up soon. Yeah, I don't have it right now. Bear with me, but um, you know, hit me up on the Instagram, on the Instagram, gram, gram. Hit me up on the Instagram, gram. My name <laughs> Callum, Callum L. Okay, that's K A L A M underscore E L. I repeat that again. That's K A L A M underscore E L. Hit me up on the Instagrams, yeah, and we can have like more conversations. You already know most of you guys might already be on my Facebooks and them ones, but just go onto the Instagram. I'm going to be more vocal on Instagram. I'm going to be doing a lot of posts on Instagram. I'm going to have more like interactions. You see pictures, see behind the scenes, what's really good, what's going on. Like, hit me up on there. And of course, Banksy, yeah, we're going to be going out to do some street interviews. I can't wait. Oh, for sure. I can't wait. You let me know. Yeah? yeah, when you're ready, we're going to go out and do those. <laughs> and uh, Speaker's Corner as well. Like, I'm trying to go back to Speaker's Corner. Maybe change up the conversation. Because I know most of you guys know me for going out there doing, you know, talking religion, Islam, Christianity, um, Hebrew Israelite stuff. Um, and of course, Kemet. Like, Kemet is, 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 is the home, right? So you usually catch me doing philosophy. We always go into, like, history, black history and so forth. But I want to change up the dialogue a little bit at Speaker's Corner because it's it's usually like it's Muslimic, Muslimic conversations, <laughs> and to me it's kind of boring. You know, I don't I can't lie, it's boring, but I don't mind because you know, like that's where I get I got my PhD, and I don't mean this literally, but that's where I got my PhD from. You know, from 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 doing Muslimic conversations. You don't love all of that. Um, but yeah, we're gonna change it up. We're gonna change it up. We're gonna do, you mean, do you mean your um, your um, pimping hose degree? My pimping hose. <laughs> <laughs> That's I the. <laughs> I, I was thinking my pretty huge D. Yeah. <laughs> I was just swinging it, just swinging it, swinging it, swinging it across <laughs> speaker's corner. I'm just there catching joke, you know, discussing religion. Everybody's taking it serious into heart, and I'm like, listen, this is just child's play to me. I'm just catching fun with it. You know, but ha, ah, ah. but people want to, people want to, you there. know, threaten your life and stab you and kill you <laughs> and and, th and want to throw acid in your face because yeah, they're not they're not ready for that heat, you man. Know, they they're don't want to have them type heat. of conversations like that. Shout out to brother <laughs> Sniper, yeah, what's good? And you already know how we do this, scholar, gang, 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 gang. So you saying, Banksy? <laughs> what's what's your last words? Uh, last words, yeah, yeah men, gentlemen. Uh, please, please do not buy women's flatulence in a jar. 
<laughs> if there's one mission in your life that you should accomplish is that you can die knowing that you never bought a jar of flatulence from anyone ever. <laughs> that is that is a thing that you should consider seriously because there is literally women out there who are millionaires. I'm not even joking. This is not even like a hyper, you know, hyper, um, what do you call Hyperly. it? Um, Hyperbole. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's not, I'm not exaggerating. Mm. This woman became so rich. But the problem was because she was eating a special kind of diet, she ended up becoming incredibly sick and had to go to hospital because she was eating so much beans and so many things in order to get the she, you know, the, 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 the thing going. Ah. She ended up ill. Don't buy these things, gentlemen. There are good women out there. I'm not, I'm not giving up on women. I think there is plenty of really there's, – there's 8 billion human beings on this planet and, and about half of them are women. Believe me, there are good women out there. It's hard to find. They're rare in the West, and I would recommend for you to look elsewhere if you're a man of value. But nevertheless, don't buy flatulence Jeez. and don't simp. Do you know what? Yeah. End the simping now. <laughs> Do you know what? Yeah, and this is another thing. Let me just quickly change it out to me. Um, yeah, another thing is, yeah, like this is why I actually want to do these shows, right? Because more time I'm hearing like it's, it's kind of like not bashing women, but it's always like, oh, it's the woman's fault, it's the woman's fault, it's the woman's fault. Like, mm. I don't even believe that, you know. I don't believe that because I think if we are men, okay, and we are said to be the leaders, right? And we are supposed to be, you know, the dominant, strong, authoritative beings that we, we proclaim to be. It's only us, yeah, that we have to blame that has messed up the game. I don't blame anybody else. In life, I take full responsibility for the good that happens to me and the bad that happens to me. Full responsibility in my life and in my sphere, my sphere of influence, my circle, my close friends and family. I take full responsibility for anything and everything that takes place there. So, 100%. And, and I see it as this, right? Us as men, okay? It's not that women are, I don't know, are low value. I just don't think we as men are high value enough. I think us as men haven't actually adapted to the new climate. Us as men are actually maladapted beings, okay? And women, quite frankly, are actually ha, doing what they're supposed to do with inside of this climate. And I'm not saying what they're doing is correct, but they're actually acclimating to the climate better than we are, okay? And we could blame feminism, but it's more than feminism. It's more than feminism. It's more to do with the economic um, environment that we're in. And it's more to do with the technology that's being created. Okay. And that's how we're failing. Because the government, yeah, is their plan to break up uh, the family. It's the economic market's plan to break up the family. Because everybody knows that this is how we can actually bring about more profits and we can get more wealthier. By doing this, because of all the intricacies involved, it's just too long for me to talk about right now as I'm closing up. But I think as us as men, as long as we like climb back up, regain our social economic dominance, as long as we reclaim our ability to hold resources, our ability to um, have prestige in this world and become high value males or high value men itself, like we won't have these problems. Because a high-value man would not be paying for flatulence. A high-value man would not be simping. A high-value man won't be doing most of these things. Regardless, yeah, and most people say, you know, high-value man, you have to be, you know, like this tall and, and, and you must look a certain way like a Chad or a Tyrone. And like, although those things do have validity, but that's not everything. That's not the composite picture that makes up a high-value man. Those are like things that definitely do make up a high value, man. Yeah? I 100%. One thing I want to quickly say, if you're a short five foot eight or below guy like me, the average guy, literally the average guy, because in most countries, this is sort of the average height, maybe five, six, five, uh, sorry, five, nine, sort of five, nine, five, ten at best. 
you this is not the end of the road for you this is not like you know because this is the other part of the manosphere is they constantly say the 666 six foot six figures six pack you you may never get six foot but you can get six figures and six pack and two out of three will get you a lot of way as far as the woman is concerned and not even the six pack look at this chubby guy this got laid plenty of times <laughs> Believe it or not, I should be your hope. I should be the, the white light at the end of this dark tunnel because if this gets laid, you have no excuses and you're 100% right. Never blame other people. Whatever you did, it was your fault and reassess, reevaluate and reapply. This is, there's, a, there's a saying in the Marines, we will adapt, improvise and overcome. That's what you do. You adapt, you overcome, and you will push forward. It's not the end of the road just because you're not six foot four. There's lots of women out in the world that will love you and, and, and actually cherish you, but you have to have the standards. You have to stand your ground and say, no, I will not cross my, I will not lower my standards when it comes to the relationship and the interactions I want to have with a woman. I will not buy flatulence. I will not do these. Have standards and stick to your standards. If you can do that as a man, it's the world will change for you. Your perspectives will change for you. Big up, Banksy. Love, family. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. And I'm out. Young, 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 Cali, baby. Oh, man. <laughs>